How's it going, everybody? My name is Nick. I also go by Golden Guy, and I'm your coach of the Philadelphia Pincers. And we're coming back to you with week three of the UNPL uh, Spring Fling Wi Fi Division, Naranja Division. And we are taking on Coach Spider and his Midnight Goli Scores. Pretty sweet logo down below. And he's got a pretty sweet team to complement that logo. So, before I get into the actual matchup, it's pretty awesome that everybody in this division, this conference, however you want to refer to it as, is sitting at one and one going into week three. I don't think I've ever seen that happen before. No one's going undefeated on the season, and that's pretty awesome. It means that we've got a lot of competition in this uh, division, and we're just having a lot of fun while we're playing, guys. So, breaking down my opponent's team. He's got access to his first round pick in Porygon Z, and he's got Brelum, Mandibuzz, Swampert, Salazzle, Terra Zebstrika, Terra Frostlass, Hatterene, and Fortress. Porygon Z hits incredibly hard on the special on the special side. Uh, gets at, can run choice Scar sets, can run choice specs, uh, has that adaptability boosted tri attacks. Um, can even set up with agility and nasty plot like he, like my opponent did last week in week two. He, we also have Breloom coming at us. This can be a more defensive, toxic orb, poison heal, like toxic stall type set, or it can just be like a sword stance setup. Maybe throw some spores around, so on and so forth. It's a pretty big threat into our team, given that we do not have a natural grass type Pokemon. So I could see spores coming to this matchup. We, we've got a plan for that. Next up is Mandibuzz. It's a very defensive mon. Can be physically defensive or especially defensive. I think it has to be physically defensive in this matchup to help deal with things like Haxorus, uh, Bombardier, and Lucario. It's a Defogger. It's probably his best hazard removal on the team. Bruce for longevity could toxic spam us if it wants to. Um, but it struggles with a form move slot syndrome in that it wants U-turn, foul play, defog, roost, and toxic, but it can't carry all five of those for obvious reasons. Then he's got Swampert. This is a pretty good uh, stealth rocker against my team. It's a big threat. It absolutely clutched the game for my opponent in week one. So go and watch his content. Feel free to subscribe to him as well. Makes some pretty great content from what I've seen so far, and I'm looking forward to watching more of his battles. But anyway, back to that Swampert. It's a big threat. Um, I do think that the way that we are dealing with dealing with it this week should be fine. And I don't think it can get out of hand against us, but it can enable the rest of the team to uh, get out of hand. Salazzle, uh, I really don't expect it to come why it is his fastest Pokemon on the team, but I don't think it goes well into my team, especially given that it would probably want to be like some kind of toxic stall set, which um, Kamala walls completely. But I so I don't think it wants to come to this matchup, but it definitely could. Then Terra Zebstrika and Terra Frostlass. If one of the two has to come, I think it's going to be the Frostlass. And just because I think it hits a little bit harder. The Zeb Strika has a little bit more uh, versatility to it. And so I think Zeb Strika, Terra, it would be offensively Terra, and Frostlass would be a defensive Terra, just so it can live, get, live a little bit longer, maybe get up some spikes, or throw up a Destiny Bond here and just try to take something out. Hatterene, I do anticipate this to come, even though you don't see it in those six down below. Um, I think it could take the place of Fortress for sure. Maybe the Manda Buzz. I definitely have to watch out for a Trick Room set, or it also gets access to Speed Control in Nuzzle, which we don't necessarily want to take, but we have ways to deal with it should we need to. And then last but certainly not least is Fortress, the ultimate hazard setter. Gets access to spikes, T-spikes I think. Definitely gets access to stealth rocks. Um, rapid spin, explosion, bolt switch, those types of things. I think it'd be a more defensive set. It won't be doing too much damage to us, but if it gets up a layer of 
something spikes or even stealth rocks, it would put our team in a little bit of a pickle. And But we are obviously bringing all three of our mods that are capable of rapid spinning, so our opponent's going to have to think about that if they want to set those hazards against us. So as you see, the six down below are the ones that I anticipate my opponent to bring, and that's going to be that Porygon Z, Swamper, Breloom, I think, Frostlass, Mandibuzz, and Fortress. But I could see, honestly, any of my opponent's nine Pokemon coming to this matchup, which is pretty terrifying. That being said, let's talk about the six that we're bringing and why we're bringing them. First up, and this is going to be our sweeper that we hopefully can break through the rest of the team first and then sweep it here in the end, is Shell Smash Blastoise. Uh, Smash Doyce coming in for the first time this season with Surf, Ice Beam, and Earthquake. This pretty much goes through the entire team. I need two Shell Smashes, unfortunately, to break through a Hatterene that is specially defensive or an Assault Vest Hatterene. But I do think that we could Shell Smash twice on Hatterene and be perfectly fine. We do have to watch out for some kind of Mirror Herb on the team. I think good Mirror Herb candidates or my opponent would probably be Porygon Z or Frostlass. Maybe Zebstrika. Zebstrika would be extremely dangerous into our team, and we'll just have to watch out for it. Next up is Choice Scarf Bombardier with Rock Slide, Dual Wing Beat, Brayford, and Parting Shot. Parting Shot's there for momentum. Brayford and Dual Wing Beat just go through my opponent's team relatively well. Dual Wing Beat is there just in case uh, it's Focus Sash. Uh, Breloom so that we can just take it out in one turn and then Rock Slide hits everything else relatively hard. Colossal is our dedicated lead this week. Terra Grass, just like the Bombardier. And those Terra Grasses are pretty much just to deter my opponent from wanting to hit Spore with Breloom or to and to help deal with Swampert a bit better. But Terra Grass Colossal is our dedicated lead because Swampert looks like a really good lead on their side. Um, we have four attacks, Flamethrower, Meteor Beam, Earth Power, and Terra Blast, with Power Herb being our thing. If we can start off against the Swampert, Terra turn one, hopefully take a flip turn to proc our Steam Engine, we're just gonna choo-choo through the team and hopefully deal with it relatively well. After Steam Engine, the only things that are out speeding Colossal are Scarf Zebstrika and Scarf Salazzle, I think, if I, if I remember correctly. Maybe a Scarf Frostlass. I don't remember exactly what I said it to. I, maybe I just said it to outspeed a uh, Scarf Porygon Z. Sounds about right. But next up is Choice Scarf Gardevoir, with the trace ability, obviously. Um, adaptability is probably the best ability that we can trace on the team. Maybe Magic Bounce from Hatterene but it's Moonblast, Psychic, Mystical Fire. Those three moves hit the entirety of the team for uh, at least neutral damage. I think the only things that it's not hitting super effectively are Swampert, Porygon Z, and oh, Zebstrika, I guess, and uh, Hatterene. But for the majority of the team, we do hit something, at least. We hit everything pretty hard. Next, then, is the Haxorus with the Roselli Berry so that we can live a fairy attack from the Hatterene. We have Sword Sand, Skell Shot, Iron Head, and Dragon Claw. It's just there to break. I mean, it's just they do damage and break, right? And then last but certainly not least, coming off the bench for the first time is Komala with the Assault Vest. Uh, obviously, it has to be the Comatose ability, but to make sure that we can't fall asleep from Spore, can't be Nuzzled, or Nuzzle Parrot, can't toxic from Salazzle, so on and so forth, or the Mana Bus. We have Double Edge just to hit things super hard, Rabbit Spin to keep those hazards off our side of the field, Earthquake just for decent spam, it's primarily there for the Salazzle, and then you turn to pivot out. That is the team that we are rocking with for this week. Hopefully we can get connected here with Spider, get this match on the way, and pick up our second win of the season. All right, we are looking for our opponent here. We do know that he's bringing the Zeb Strika and not the Frostlass. And the Zeb Strika is Terra Rock, is what he said. Which is what I did see in a mock. So that's cool. Rock. 
Then we see Porygon Z. Of course. Breloom. Thought that was coming. Hatterene. No Mandibuzz, okay. You know, I'd rather not see the Mandibuzz personally, so I'll take that. Swampert. And Fortress. Cool. Alright. You know, we're just gonna lead what we've been leading. I know, or what we've been leading in Mox. So that's Mandibuzz over Hatterene. Oh, cool. They were already in the same spots. And... Let's go ahead and lock in Macargo. The Colossal is our... Oh, nope. Don't want to do that. Come on. Back. Thank you. Enter. Enter. Colossal is what we are leading. Hoping. Oh, shit. Oof. Don't lean on my chair like that. Um. Colossal is what we are leading, hoping for a Swampert lead. Good luck to my opponent. Have, some, have fun. We'll make it a good one. And let's see what we... Elixir, that's the Zep strike up. Okay. I'm curious if this Zeb Strika is actually... So it's Terra Rock. Terra Blast does a lot of damage. However... I don't think it's, like, that bad. I can just Terra off rip here and go for an earth power he's not gonna terra he could volt switch but we are just gonna terra off rip um earth power is still doing a considerable chunk if he stays in yeah volt switch comes off that doesn't do half of anything. Took us down to 340 something. We'll just say 340. Did 9%. So he has no special attack investment. This is going to be the Hatterene. That's going to do negligible damage, but it does. I have 15%. So let's see what we're dealing with here. That Earth Power did fit. Okay, so we're dealing with a specially defensive Hatterene. For 15%. See, careful nature. No, all nature. That's. Yeah, that looks about right. Looks about right. Okay. Um, hazards are still there. Mala switches in decently well here. And we can maybe scout out an item. It's not leftovers, so we do know that. Let's go out to Porygon K, Kamala making its debut. Comatose, are you Nuzzle? Dazzling Gleam comes off. Takes us down to 198, it's 27%. Dazzling Gleam. Yep. So that's no special attack investment on this. And I'm just going to U-turn out here. Not going to think too hard about that. Double Edge uh, will do, it would do a lot to this Hatterene. But U-turning out is going to give us the switch in this initiative. That's the fortress. Okay. We do break the potential, or we break the sturdy on the fortress. So we can just go back out into Macargo here and go for the flamethrower. Is 
Does that bring it back up to full? Ooh, I can't tell. Maybe. I am just gonna flamethrower. Okay, yeah, he has to switch out. Cool. Hatterene probably comes back up here. Yep. Flamethrower should be doing a considerable chunk. Okay, so... 2.52... Calm. Meteor Beam kills it. I don't know that I want to go for it. On the other hand... Yeah, I don't want to go for it just yet. I'll just go out into Gardevoir. This Dazzling Gleam would be doing about 35-ish percent. We do get the magic bounce off. It's not going to do much. From here, I think let's see. I think Moonblast is the rail is the is a good play. Um, Mystical Fire catches the fortress potentially, but. The Tom pass out, okay. You're gonna go out in the fortress here. That is fine. So we have seen D Gleam, BP, Pain Split. I'm not too worried about this Hatterene. It's not doing much. Um, and we have seen Lefties on Fortress and Volt Switch. Strike. Why not just take notes as I'm playing the match rather than trying to catch up from memory, which is going to screw me in the end. He could easily go Fortress here if he is at. He would be at 100%. Um, at the end of this exchange, because you come in leftovers with Brock, and that would bring him back up to sturdy range. So he doesn't know that I'm Troy Scarf at the moment, and. That means that he could live the Mystical Fire. Breloom comes out, okay. Mm. I don't, mm, I don't agree with this play. I'm naturally faster than you. I'm just gonna Moonblast. I'm naturally faster than you. You have to be Sash right now. Okay, you're sashed, okay. You can spore me, I'm fine with that. Bullet seed? Eh. So this Breloom is seed and picks up a kill on Hatterene, or not, or, ha, picks up a kill on God of War, which is fine. We took it down to sash. God of War. Goes down, Breloom picks up a kill. And here I can into Haxorus here. 
I'm wasting time. Yeah, I can go on the axe racer. Is going to do a. It's gonna. It's gonna tickle. So, from here. I can just scale shot to make sure I'm faster than anything. If you can mock punch, it's fine. The risk with going into Hatterene here is I could just hit any other non dragon move and kill it. And he goes out in the fortress, which is fine. I'm not worried about that. But we do miss a scale shot, which is quite unfortunate. Okay, and he wasn't at full. Okay, so that makes sense. Um, let's see. Fortress against I go out in the colossal here every time because then I can just flamethrower to kill we know that it's lefties right this was sash breloom Colossal coming out here allows me to flamethrower the fortress relatively free. It's not going to do much. I mean, he can bolt switch, that's fine. Yeah, so we see bolt on the fortress. My opponent goes out into I really want to get this Colossal in against Swampert, but that requires a bit of metagame that I'm not necessarily awake enough to do at the moment. And he's preserving the Swampert in the back relatively well. Future reference, Haxorus into Fortress. Iron Head puts it, does at least like 8, does 8%. Crash out is the Porygon, okay? Porygon into Colossal. Try attack is going to hurt if it comes off. Hmm. I could. I mean, it's not going to kill, right? So I could just meteor beam here. He goes for the try attack. Okay, we live it. Meteor Beam comes off, charging up. Power pops, and we do connect the Meteor Beam. Is this how tanky is this thing? And we just wipe out, or we just wipe out the uh, Porygon Z with Colossal. Awesome. That is a huge threat off of the, out of the battle. Porygon Z coming out. Huge threat gone. Huge. Unfortunately, I got... Unfortunately, the Guard of War is dead. 
so I can't healing wish my colossal back up. Um, but I, I think I take that trade every day of the week. That meteor beam was, it was a roll to kill for sure, but it was a roll in my favor, assuming that he has absolutely no bulk, like a like max speed, uh, max special attack timid. And Adarine's not gonna live a hit here, guys. No shot. We are a plus one special attacking Colossal. No shot, you live this flamethrower, and I am faster than you unless you have an immense amount of speed. You have to have an immense amount of speed here to kill. And I don't think anything you do would kill anyway. You could mystical fire, but I might be flash fire. You have no idea. And we're just gonna knock this thing out. Yes! Colossal picking up another kill against the Hatterene. And that looks to me like uh, a solid Blastoise endgame now. Toadsworth is the Breloom. We're sitting at 130. So let's say you're adamant, right? We're at 35%. You need four hits. You need five hits on Bullet Seed to kill us. Or you could be close combat, I guess, right? That's a thing. That would kill. I'm going to keep Colossal around. Because it can still take a hit as like a flip turn from the Swampert. And it can take... Yeah, I'm keeping the Colossal around. And just going to go out into Kamala here. Colossal still takes out the Fortress with relative ease, can take the flip turn from Swampert. He does go for Bullet Seed, That's I'm fine with that. I'll let Brolin have the kill on Komala. His special attackers were gone, unless Swampert is some kind of special attacker. Now I can just switch out into Haxorus here. And... Just go for... A... Uh, probably a, just a Dragon Claw. Does enough damage. I could scale shot, see if I miss again. Could just sword stance. But that's not really gonna get me anywhere with the fortress, but the fortress also isn't going to be doing much to me. So I think I do just scale shot here. And just in case the uh, Zip Striker wants to come in, but no, he's gonna go out to fortress, which is perfectly fine. And I actually connect this time. So that's three hits. Yeah. I don't, are you not physically defensive? Because that did more than what I thought it would. No, it did about right. Okay. Um. Ooh. Let's see. Gyro Ball with me at plus one is going to be doing a chunk. So here, I think, I 
I can. Hmm. This is a tough one. I could just sword stance and just start getting. Yeah, let's just do that. I'll sword stance and start getting damage off. He could gyro ball if he wants to. That's perfectly fine. Um, he could expect me to go back out into my colossal and he could volt switch. Which, if he does that, then I think that's basically game. But I think a gyro, yeah, gyro ball makes a lot of sense here. That's like. I did a lot more damage than I should have. Oh no, I didn't calculate the defense drop. Yeah, oh well. So here I can just go for a big dragon claw. I am fine with losing Haxorus. Haxorus hasn't really done much for me all season, which is crazy because it was my first round pick. But if I can get damage on to this fortress to take it out of sturdy range, then I will, so that Colossal can then come back in and then just hit a uh, flamethrower on it to kill it. We know it's not Akabear, we know it's Leftovers, and we've seen Gyroball as well. That should, yeah, it does about 25%. Cool. And he bolt switches. Oh my goodness. That's a huge play. Huge. Okay. Um, Zeb Striker against this guy. We outspeed it unless it's Scarf. Swamper coming in to a plus two. He can come in here, he can just mock punch right here. Which is probably what he wants to do. We'll just Dragon Claw. Yeah, sorry. Breloom picking up a third kill. Oh my goodness, Breloom picking up all the kills. Axorus goes down to a mock punch. go out into my uh, Bombardier. And we are just going to Braveford because if he goes out into Fortress, we are still fine. So Breloom, Mock Punch, as long as we stay above 50%, we should be fine, unless you're adamant. Yeah, as long as we stay above 50%, we will be fine to deal with the Breloom in this manner. We could also Shell Smash in front of the Fortress, which I think is what I will do next, is I will... Okay, yeah. So you're just gonna sack off the off the dude, which is perfectly fine. That doesn't reveal anything. Other, yeah, it doesn't reveal any like that I'm scarf or anything. So Breloom goes down to bomb. Breloom, where are you, dude? There you are. Bombardier you're picking up a kill. Fortress is still here. Fortress isn't doing anything. Like he, he doesn't outspeed Cole, so Cole's gonna defeat it every time as long as I keep Cole around. Blastoise can come in, claim, or, and just set up as long. That Swampert hasn't come out, I don't know why. Let's see, so Zeb Strika, Terra Rock is still taking 50% from a Brave Bird. And I'm Scarf. Swampert. Blastoise. 
I'm naturally faster than Okay. On Birdier. I'm Sash, right? No, no, sorry, I'm Scarf. So I'm just going to Brave Bird here for damage. And see if what we're playing around with. I, I don't know why he's keeping Fortress around. Unless it's <clears throat> some kind of explosion set just to pick something off in the end. I still don't know what item the Zepstrika is. Brave Bird comes off. Big damage. Stealth Rock goes up. Okay. It's fine. I am just going to sit here and Brave Bird. Maybe I should have switched out into Cole there. On a potential flip turn. Oh, that would have been great. Oh. <laughs> so, Zeb Strika against Blastoise. Oh, yeah, I should have switched out there. Oof. Bombardier goes down to Swampert. Let's see. Zeb Strika against Colossal. Rock. Terra Blast. Oof. Did I just throw that by not switching out? Get Bombardier off the layout. I think I might have. Oops. Because I don't think I can play around that. Right, because overheat into my Terra Grass Colossal would have killed. I think I have to actually hold on. Let me think about this. So I have this guy in as we're sitting at 262. I'm gonna shell smash. I'm gonna go for the win here. You can go for a wild charge. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Blastoise kills. Okay. There, Blastoise got killed. I think I just messed this endgame up so bad. Zep Strika picks up a kill. You are wild charge. Into my colossal. Just have to see it, guys. He has to overheat. Earth power is always the play. I don't know that he lives it. Even if he Terra rocks, I don't think he lives it. He has to overheat and hit. Terra Blast touch. shouldn't. Oh, it's gonna do 25% men, and I'm at I'm right there. Damn it! I cannot believe I threw that endgame. Oh my goodness. Good game to my opponent. I threw I should have oh I got greedy there. At the end with the bomb, I should have I should have just called the flip turn, and I that game would have been easy, easily done, easily done. 
Damn it! I'm so mad at myself right now. I should have won that. Oh, good game, Spider. You played really well. Played out of your mind to get back into that. Damn it! I'm... Ugh. Okay. Unfortunately, that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes, guys. Um, yeah. So we'll be heading into week four with a one and two record. And yeah, that's about it. My name's Nick. I also go by Golden Guy. And I'm your coach of the Philadelphia Pincers. We'll be seeing you. Peace.